everyone, and welcome back to Acting One. For this lesson, what we are going to do is I need you to go and find an unusual object. The more unusual, the better, and it's even better if you haven't seen this object before. So if you have a, someone that you're living with, see if you can borrow something unusual or have them find something unusual for you. And you're going to take a couple minutes to look at whatever the object is, find out all of the details that are around it, and then I want you to make up a story. We're going to use our imagination as a way to connect to things. This works for your acting process in a bunch of different ways. One, this is how you connect to a character. This is a character on paper that you've never read before, and you have to find out, using your imagination, how you connect to this person. But also that your costumes, this is props, and every prop, especially if it's talked about in a play or a film, is central to the character. Everything that you have has a story. I have my wedding, my wedding ring, and my wife has something inscribed on the, underneath the band for me, and there's a story behind that that is just for me. And I carry it around with me all the time. And every one of us has those objects, and every object has a story. And that story is very central to us, right? The more important the object, the more we cannot live without it, the more we carry it around with us. But you need to start learning how to do that with objects you've never seen before, especially as an actor, because that's what you're going to be doing. The reason that we, it needs to be unusual is because we're always going to start with something strange, and usually those things that we hold on to the most are strange but they're important to us. So I want you to take a little bit of time to look at the object, look at all of the elements on the object, and then I want you to tell us a story. It doesn't need to be long, maybe two minutes or less, about why that object is one of the most important things that you have, even though it's not yours. See, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start off by talking about yourself and your life. And you're gonna blend it into the object that you have. One of the best examples that I can give you, because there's always a student who doesn't show up prepared in class. And one student brought a piece of paper. And usually we have to hand the object to another person in the class. So you're not talking about your object you brought in, you're talking about somebody else's. And this student got a piece of paper. And I was like, oh no, this poor, this poor student. But the student looked at the paper and he said, you know, a lot of you guys don't know this, but uh, in third grade, I couldn't read. And I used to act out because I didn't want anyone to know that I couldn't read. And my teacher found this out. And so she sat down with me and he told us the teacher's name. And he said, she, she told me that for an hour after school, every week, every day of the week, she was going to teach me to read. So he would stay after class. She would teach him how to write and how to read. And by the end of the story, everybody in the class is crying. And he says, so now every time I look at a piece of paper, I think of that teacher. All of us were crying and he made that story up. Now it did start with something in his life because if it wasn't true, we wouldn't have connected to it. Your job is to find an object and to connect to it. Find something about it it will trigger, every object will trigger something in your memory and you can pull and draw from that to make it part of you, make it important to you. And if you do a really good job at this, you're gonna not wanna give that object up because now it has a history. Now it's special and that's your assignment. All right, everyone, I look forward to seeing your videos and I'll see you soon.